Welcome, everyone, to Cornerstone Television Network. I'm Pastor Gary Mitrick, and this is a live special program. As we all know, we are dealing with the coronavirus, not only in our nation, but around the whole world. And yesterday, when I was watching the president's news brief, and they were just talking about the possibility of things escalating, that there could be several million people here in America that maybe could contract the virus. There could be 100 or 200,000 deaths. I said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Lord, this cannot be. And so I called my dear friend and prayer partner, Bishop Joseph Garlington, and I said to him, I said, what if we would go on Cornerstone Television and speak to the church, to the believer, rather than talk about the problem, let's talk about what our response and responsibility to this problem should be. And so we are calling this special the crisis that requires the cry of repentance. The crisis that requires the cry of repentance. And Bishop, I know that this is heavy on your heart as well. It is. And um, what, what's even heavier is, is the possibility that we have fashioned a theological construct that denies the reality of God imposing his will upon us at times through, through judgments and through gracious openings that he can make for us. And, and we've seen it for years. And the Bible tells us that we are to pay attention to those things that were written in scripture a long time ago. He says, for they are written for our instruction, for our encouragement, so that through the patience and encouragement of scriptures, we can have hope. And uh, I was sharing with some of our people that when Joshua said to the children of Israel, we, you've never been this way before. Right. Uh, my response is that's true, but we can't say that of God and the people of God, so that God is not taken by surprise. In fact, he is very active in this world that he created because he loves the creatures. The Bible tells us that we, we will eventually reap what we sow, and if we continue to do it, and I believe that a lot of things that are taking place in the world around us are things that are being observed but not being studied and evaluated. I remember saying to you this morning, uh, we were referring to King David when the nation of Israel went three years without rain. And David said, there's something wrong with that. And so the Bible says he sought the Lord and the Lord said to him, the reason there is no rain is because of Saul's disobedience in violating the covenant that Joshua made with the Gibeonites. And so you have to sort that out. And so David took pains to deal with it. And then of course, David, when he prayed, when he did what he was supposed to do, they got the rain. And I believe that we are living now in the day of Second Chronicles chapter seven, verse 12. And I want us just to look at that, please. In that, in that text, he declares that there needs to be something that's going to happen. So then the Lord appeared to Solomon at night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and I've chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. If I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, and my people are called by my name. And the scripture really actually says, and if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, 
forgive their sin and will heal their land. And my eyes will be open and my ears sensitive to the prayers offered in this place. Bill Bright, a number of years ago, when he was encouraging people to fast for 40 days, he says this particular text can be perfectly summarized as a description of what fasting is. It's humbling yourself, it's seeking God, it's turning away from things so that we can hear from God. If my people, there are three interesting things in that text that I've pointed out and, and I want to see, I want, I want you to listen to it. He says, if I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or if I command the locusts, or if I send pestilence, three words in this text, no rain, locusts, and pestilence. Those three phenomena are very real in our world today. In fact, think about it like this. The phenomena that required divine intervention, as you were praying earlier, was the absence of rain. Right. It was the presence of locusts, and it was the persistence of a, a pestilence or a pandemic. And, and all three of those things are existing right now in our world. Right now in our world. Australia, according to one authority, is experiencing eight in 800 years, the worst season of famine or without rain they've ever experienced. In, in East Africa and the Horn of Africa and Arabia, they are experiencing billions and billions of locusts who are devouring the crops and all of that's taking place. And it goes without saying, the coronavirus is now the talk of every nation and it's pandemic. It's, it's like we are no longer to say because I live in the most modern nation with the best health system that I am I'm excluded from all the things that are taking place. God is at work and he's seeking to get our attention. And so this word repentance is a very important word for us because it requires us to have a change of heart, a change of mind, so that that can be followed by a change of direction. And listen to what Acts, Paul says in Acts 20, 21. He says, solemnly testifying to both Jews and Greeks of repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Repentance isn't just changing something, but it's saying to God, I know you are requiring a change in me. And over the years, I think our nation has abandoned the whole idea of faithfulness to God, of righteousness, of pursuing holiness, looking at the word and obeying it and not, de not deluding ourselves into thinking like one of the guys in the Old Testament say, I will be just and right even though I persist in going my own way. We live in a world where Isaiah's world, Isaiah's word to us is so clear because he says, all we like sheep have gone astray and have turned every man to our very own way. And I want to point out that there are issues that we have refused to come to grips with and we are failing to speak out because we don't want a reaction either from our friends or from the media. And here's what, here's what Mordecai said to, to Esther when she was in a place of influence. And he says, you've got to say something. He says, because if you don't speak out, if you remain silent, he says, deliverance will come from some other place, but you won't be spared. Obadiah said it this way. He says, when Edom stood and watched the invasion of Jerusalem, he essentially said, in the day you stood by and you said nothing, you were just like the enemy. And I'm saying to us, we cannot take the place of the enemy simply because we refuse. Fear is not an option. Fear is not something that God's called us to do. In fact, Paul tells it like this. God has not given us the spirit of fear or timidity, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And so I'm saying it's time for the believers to rise up and embrace the reality of where we are, what God wants to do in us, and, and, and to encourage our hearts. One of the songs that we've been singing in our house was birthed out of several passages of scripture. The Bible says, those who hunger and thirst after righteousness will be filled. I believe there is a real thirst for God. There's a real hunger for God. And a physician wrote a book entitled, you're not sick, you're thirsty. And it's your body's desperate cry for water. I want us to listen 
as our ministry team sings this song, Hunger.
Well, I think God's got our attention. But what are we as believers going to do during this time? You know, everything that can be shaken is being shaken. The sports world, the economic system, the education system. But while school is out, maybe you're working from home or even laid off, this isn't the time for us to play more video games. This is the time for us to seek Him, to go after Him with all of our hearts. I'm going to open up the prayer lines. If you'd like to call and just say, yes, I am going to step up in humility, in repentance, in prayer, and I'm going to pray and get on board that God would be able to heal our land. The number is there, 888-665-4483. Amen. We got to press in. Yes. I love the passage in Isaiah 26, 9. It says, at night my soul longs for you. Indeed, my spirit within me seeks you diligently. And then here's the part. Uh, this particular verse it slammed home to me the day I was sitting in Washington, D.C. And, and listening to the news as planes were flying into the World Trade Building. And as I sat there and watched that, God spoke this verse to me. And the line that really dug deep was, when the earth experiences your judgments, the inhabitants of the world learn righteousness. And there's some ways that we need to embrace this reality that some people don't really learn what righteousness is until they experience judgment. The problem, on the other hand, is that when the church, when the, the, the people of God feel like it's the world that has the problem, we forget that it's the Apostle Peter who said in the church era, for judgment begins at the house of God. And so I believe one of the requirements that we're facing right now is the requirement to come before God, not only as intercessors and people who are asking God for a breakthrough, not, not just for ourselves, but for a world of people who have no idea what's taking place. God, told, right. God told, told Jonah, he said, you are upset because something that you didn't create is gone. And I'm telling you, I'm upset with you because I created these people who don't know the difference between their right hand and their left. And my struggle at times is realizing that people in the world don't really know there is a God like we know there is a God. And so it becomes incumbent upon us to realize that God is seeking to drive people not away from him, but to him. And 9-11, the week after 9-11, churches were packed, right. double services. But when the pressure goes off, people go back doing the same way. But I, I believe this isn't going to change. This pressure is going to stay on. I don't believe the virus is going to continue. I, I don't believe that something that man created or man manufactured, he can't create anything. I don't believe that anything that man concocted put together can, is something that God doesn't control. He says, there isn't any weapon that has ever been imagined, he says, that I don't have authority over. And that's that passage in, in the message translation that says, no weapon formed against you will prosper. And our need is to understand if this is a weapon that's being used by the enemy just to affect us, but it's affecting the whole church. And so the issue for us is, how do we prepare ourselves for a harvest of people who are going to come running up like they did on the day of Pentecost and say, men and brethren, what shall we do? We need to have an answer for them. And part of the answer is that the church itself needs to know that we are in seasons of hunger ourselves. And God is saying, I've blessed you, but you become more focused on the blessing than the blesser. 
I've given you a good life and you become more focused on the good life than the good God who gave it to you. And so he's pressing us into the fact that maybe we don't pray like we ought to. Maybe we're not seeking God like we ought to. Maybe the desire that we have for other things has taken root in us and it's spoiling the seed that God's planted in us. And so I'm looking at this passage and it was one of the ones we talked about in Isaiah 30, verse 15. He says, thus the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel has said, in repentance and rest, you will be saved. In quietness and trust is your strength, but you are not willing. There are moments, I believe, when God has called us to a time of seeking him. He's called us to a time of putting our stuff aside and saying, let's go for God. Let's satisfy this hunger in us that only God can satisfy. And so our disposition when God says, come away. The psalmist said it like this. When you said, seek my face, my heart, heart said, said your face I'll seek. Right. But I believe God has been saying to the church, seek my face, but we've been saying, I've got other things to do, I'm busy, and no one has to spend that. It's like, it's just too much time in church. We, we spend too much time, but the, you know what's going on right now? Nobody is talking about too much time. Everybody's saying, I miss church. And sometimes you can't miss something until it's gone. How do we respond? And here's where we, we come up with the term, the cry of repentance. There's a cry that God is waiting for from us. He's waiting for it from the church. And if you recall in the Old Testament, in particularly the book of Judges, whenever God would bless his people and they would stay cool for a while and then they would forget that God blessed them and they would go back into sin and they would stay in that. And then when they were so oppressed by that, the Bible says they would cry out to the Lord and he would deliver them. And that happened again. And that word, cry out to God, they cried out to God. And here's what Isaiah is saying. Therefore, the Lord longs to be gracious to you. God's not sitting in heaven in his throne saying, I am going to make them sorry that they ever did this. God's longing for us is greater than our longing for him. And here's what he says. The Lord longs to be gracious to you. And therefore, he waits on high to have compassion on you. For the Lord is a God of justice. How blessed are all those who long for him. How blessed are all those who long for him. Why not make this the season in which we begin to long for God like he's longing for us? We begin to say to God, we've ignored you. We filled our time with so many different things. We are soccer moms. Our kids are taking all of our time. We can't come to church. We can't do special meetings. We don't have time to pray because we are so consumed with all of the things that are going on that in reality have no eternal value to them at all. I heard one guy say, a spiritual leader, heard him say, I'm upset because I can't enjoy March Madness anymore. And I'm thinking, you're upset because you can't watch basketball and there are people in Italy and in Spain and in China who are dying like flies and that you're more concerned about some human activity that has no eternal value at all. It won't amount to anything, how many shots you made, how, how you became something that you are. We've invested too much in the things that are around us that are sapping our strength. Yes. And Solomon, in that particular passage in the Song of Solomon, he says, go to, watch out for the little foxes who are destroying the grapes. And we're missing things that are taking up the harvest, they're taking up our delight, they're taking up the blessings that God has given to us. And here's what God says, O oh, people in Zion, inhabitant in Jerusalem, you will weep no longer. And I believe when he says you will weep no longer, it's because it's going to take weeping to turn it. It's going to take crying out to God. It's going to take breaking our heart before God. Jesus looked at Jerusalem, the Bible says he wept over it. And I think where we are today is that we don't realize in history, in the great history of revivals, they were always preceded by brokenness, people crying out to God, asking him to heal their land. He says, I will be gracious to you at the sound of your cry. 
when he hears it, he will answer you. God is waiting for a sound from the church. That. I believe that. He's waiting for us to lift up our voice and cry out to him as though there is no tomorrow. And, and so are you willing to cry out to God with all of your heart? What can we do? Here it is. It's April the 1st. And Bishop and I, we really prayed and sought the Lord. And, you know, in the book of Daniel, Daniel had his three eunuchs, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and, and they wanted them to eat the food that all the other eunuchs were eating in training. And, and Daniel said, no, 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 test us for 10 days. And what we'd like to do is set aside the next 10 days from today, April 1st, until April the 10th, which is actually Good Friday, Passover, which I believe is very, very significant, begins on April the 8th. And say, let's, as the church, as believers, as Christians, let's set aside the next 10 days and let's declare a corporate fast. Let's pray. Let's intercede. Let's seek the Lord and let's let God hear the cry of our hearts and the cry of the righteous. So we're going to ask you, would you join us for the next 10 days between now and Good Friday? We're calling that if you're able to pray three times a day, 6 o'clock in the morning, 12 at noon, and 6 o'clock each evening... Now, that's not obligatory, but we're just putting that out there for solidarity because God honors unity. God honors us when we can get together in one accord. And let's cry out and call out to God. He said, if my people, he's waiting for you and for me to humble ourselves and to pray and to seek his face and turn from our wicked ways. Then he will hear from heaven, forgive our sin, and heal our land. And there's a deep need for that to take place. And part of the issue, I think Psalm 82 says, for all the foundations of the earth are out of course. And one of the key foundations is the justice system. God set up judges, and he says, I want you to judge on my behalf. I want you, when you judge, I want you to be aware that you're not judging for yourselves and you're judging for God. And so when God sees this, he says, I need you judges to, to deal with this issue of corruption, to defend the defenseless, to father the fatherless and the foreign, deliver the poor and the powerless, liberate them from the grasp of the wicked. There is so much that's going on that the justice system, which is no longer just, is creating the phenomena of injustice and multiplying it in a number of ways. Amen. And we need to pray about that. And so we're asking Pastor Jeff Leake if he will just lift up his voice on behalf of the church and ask God to deal with the justice system and to bring it into righteous order. Pastor Jeff Leake from Allison Park, thank you for joining us. And uh, I believe your heart is with us to see God heal our land. Yeah, I love the focus of the next 10 days. What a vision for Good Friday. And then, of course, the resurrection. Let's believe for that together. So shall we pray? Yes. Amen. Amen. So God, we thank you that you are the defender of the vulnerable, the forgotten, the fatherless. And we thank you that you know those who are disenfranchised and destitute. You are concerned about everyone who's sick and all of the potential for harm. But we know your heart is especially for the poor and the powerless. And so we pray, God, during this time in our nation where there is so much going on, we pray that they would not be forgotten. We ask, Lord, that you would liberate them from any of the grasp of the wicked or the corrupt. We pray that, God, that your light would shine in the darkness and that this would be a season that you would bring justice and you would bring 
peace and you would bring deliverance for those who are struggling. God, we thank you that we can depend on you. We thank you, Jesus, that your name is greater than anything that we face. And we look forward to these next 10 days of seeking your face so that we can see the breakthrough occur. We thank you together in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And Pastor Jeff, thank you. And I, I believe you're going to get your church and congregations to just get on board with this 10 days of prayer and fasting. And we thank you so much for that. Yeah. Bishop, I, I, I really believe God hears the cry of the righteous. I believe that. I know he does. And uh, we've all experienced it in some way as individuals and many of us in our churches, we've seen that. And so when we focus on what God can do because of what God has done, we can celebrate a victory that we can't see. And as one person said it, if you can't see the invisible, then you can't believe for the miraculous. And right. so I'm challenged today because I feel like this is the day that we have to put our faith where our life is. And we've got to say, God, we have no other alternative. You're our only hope. Amen. And we've got Father Mike Werschmidt with us now on the line. Father Mike, thank you so much for getting on board with us. And I, I appreciate Father Mike because he's right there in the nitty gritty working with the poor and the homeless and has done it for years. And I believe, I know many people who are men of God, but I love this guy. Part of the problem that we're facing is that the false prophets that deny the word of God today are more often than not in the media and they will, pro they will provoke and they will say things that are absolutely contrary to the will of God. And so, pa Father Mike, please just lift up this situation that will bring about a reality in the media world that will exalt God rather than deny his reality. Amen. I'm, uh, I'm honored to join my two brothers, my dear brothers, and uh, other pastors in our city, and I'm weeping right now as as the Lord, the Holy Spirit is moving uh, in our midst, and my prayer will be that the, the Lord will cause her bride, her church throughout the world to weep and to be on her knees. So, Lord, I join my two brothers. I join the pastors of our city. Lord, uh, as we begin this 10-day fast, corporate prayer, Lord, we recognize that the church has to repent, must repent. And we cry out to you, Lord, for your mercy, your forgiveness. Lord, we confess and we repent as pastors of our own sin if we're not crying out to you for the forgiveness of our sins, the sins of our members of our churches and the sin of our cities and our nation. And Lord, we especially cry out to you, Lord, to deal with the media in our nation. Lord, all the false lies that have come out, Lord, the, the lack of, of understanding of who you are, even recognizing that there's a living God, Lord, we cry out to you that, Lord, you would deal with the media in your way, not yes. our way, Lord, because yes. our way gets in the way, yes. Lord, that we would be on our knees to cry out that you would save, Lord, those uh, that write the stories, those on the news broadcast, those in the liberal media, that, Lord, need you, Jesus. They need you. Jesus. They need salvation to come into their hearts, to come into their stations, to come into their families. Lord, how many are they leading astray, Lord, with false truth, Jesus. false gospels? Lord, we cry out to you to save, Jesus. Lord, our nation and Jesus. our world from the distraction, Lord, from the falseness that the media puts out. So, Lord, save your people. Save your inheritance. Lord, we cry out as a hungry people, Jesus. thirsty, as that song was sung earlier. Thank you, Lord. Lord, hear our cry, Jesus. not only as leaders and pastors, but, Lord, as your children, your children where your church has gone astray, your sheep have gone astray. Save us, Lord. We are a broken people. Save us from our own sinful ways. Lord, we thank you that you are a faithful God, and during these 10 days you will hear the cries of your people. We bless you. We honor you, Lord, together as brothers and pastors, prophets and teachers and evangelists. Lord, we cry out to you. Thank we you. have nowhere else to go anymore. Yes. Lord, we've tried it our own way, and we have failed miserably. Thank you, Lord. So, Lord, thank you that you are calling your bride Jesus. to her knees. 
Lord, for for our failures. Yes. Our failures. Amen. We love you. We love you. Thank you, God. In the sweet, sweet Thank name you. of Jesus, we cry out to you. Thank you. Amen. 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 You know, the Lord said, if we draw near to God, he will draw near to us. We want to let you know the phone lines are open, 888-665-4483. If you want to get in on these prayers, if you want to just let the prayer partner know, I'm going to be fasting and praying and repenting over these next 10 days from now, April 1st, until Good Friday. Good Friday with Passover beginning on April the 8th. Amen. One of the reasons I think it's important to hold the media accountable is that a recent headline in the New York Times, which is supposed to be the premier uh, periodical, news periodical, it had this headline, the road to coronavirus hell was paved by evangelicals. And the, the, the note of the article is that because President Trump is listening to radical, conservative evangelicals, that's you and us. We're that. Because he's doing that, we don't believe in science, and so he is following that path. And so every attack possible has been raised against someone who has produced more things for the, the body of Christ than any other president in recent history. And so I'm asking us to pray for this president like never before. Never before have witches actually said, we will pray and cast spells on this man once a week. And the battle is fierce. This is no longer just something that's off in the distance. It's hand-to-hand -hand combat. And we need to wrestle. And the Bible says we wrestle with persons without bodies. So this is not just an intellectual issue. Amen. It's a spiritual battle. And I'm going to ask Pastor Jarrell Gilliam if he will lead us in prayer for the President of the United States and those who give him counsel. Pastor Jarrell, thank you so much for joining us. The Bible tells us to pray first of all for those that are in authority. So would you pray for our president, for Vice President Pence, and for all the leaders of our nation? It's a pleasure and an honor to join you. And yes, I'd be honored to do that and to think of the church coming together at this time to pray and for the next 10 days to unify our focus. We know that God is going to be hearing from us. So, so let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you and we thank you that you have given us an assignment to bring heaven to earth. And so right now, Father, we are wanting to align ourselves with your purposes. We want to align ourselves with what you have called us to do. And you have asked us to pray for those who are in authority, to lift them up before you. So right now, as never before, our leaders need your divine guidance and direction. And Father, we are asking for our president, President Donald Trump, Lord, that you would surround him with people who have godly advice for him, that you would give him ears to hear your voice, and that he would say yes to the counsel that you are bringing to him. For Vice President Pence as well, we lift him up and we ask, Lord, that you would give him divine insight and divine direction. Father, for all of our leaders that are out there, we are certainly in a battle right now, and there are people that are wanting to bring division into to tear us down. But what we are saying is we are coming against the darkness with light. And we are coming with an opposite spirit of the world. We're coming in unity and we're coming together saying, let your kingdom come and let your will be done. Even now, God, as we are uh, putting ourselves together in unity, we're saying, God, would you, would you prepare us to bring your light into darkness? the places where there has been deception, Lord, may we bring truth. We thank you, Lord, for Isaiah 58 that, that tells us the kind of fast that you're calling us to. You tell us the kinds of things you want to see us accomplish. And part of what you want to see is for those who are bound, those who are, who are enslaved to be set free. And so, Father, we want to see your freedom come, your joy come, 
your love come in the midst of the fear that the world is trying to bring. Father, in that same chapter, you also tell us that part of the reason that judgment comes is because we ignore the Sabbath. And so, Father, during this time of Sabbath, we're forced in Sabbath, Lord, we want to align ourselves with heaven. So we're asking that our political leaders would align themselves with heaven, that they would work on behalf of those who, who need help, and that we would support them in our prayers. And we thank you in advance for using us and for using these next 10 days to see your kingdom released. We, we thank you, Lord, that in 2 Chronicles 16, 9, that you say that the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth, looking for those whose hearts are for you, so you may show themselves strong on your behalf. Father, may you look down and see us, and may our actions during these next, next 10 days be something that is pleasing your sight, that will release your power and your anointing. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Jarrell. And while you're going to the phone, 888-665-4483, letting us know, I am going to be a part of these 10 days of prayer and fasting, praying at 6 a.m., 12 noon, 6 p.m. every day. If that works for you, if it doesn't, just the time to seek the Lord with all of your heart in humility and in repentance. So while you call, we're going to go to Adriana Simon and Phil Collier as they continue to welcome the presence of the Lord. Yeah. Father, we declare your greatness. We declare, declare your goodness. You have the name above every other name.
Amen. He's a great and mighty God. Yes, he is. We have Pastor J. Anthony Gilbert on the phone, and uh, we are just calling on pastors, the church of Greater Pittsburgh, if we could just rally together in unity to pray. And you know, in these 10 days from today until Good Friday, which is April the 10th, over these next 10 days, let's just humble ourselves, seek His face, repent of our sins, and ask the Lord to heal our land. You know, we're all claiming that promise. No plague will come near our dwelling out of Psalm 91. But Bishop, the, the, the condition of that promise right. is he who dwells, who dwells in, in the secret place shadow. of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. That's it. And I think that if we focus on that position, even today, when we're looking at people who want to declare the worst is yet to come, who don't realize that in Scripture, in so many cases, when they faced the worst, they didn't know that the worst was over. And I love that story in 2 Kings where the famine is so extensive that people have resorted to eating their babies and food. The inflation rate, the economy is just out of whack. And in the middle of that moment, Elisha says, tomorrow about this time, Amen. this will be over. And overnight, the famine was done. Overnight, the economy was turned around. And I think of Jesus when they told Jairus, stop bothering the master, your daughter is dead. And Jesus says, ignore them. Their daughter is going to live. And I believe the prophetic words that the blessing is coming, that the answer is coming, is going to be birthed out of the intercession that precedes that because I see God doing it. And, and I just believe that Pastor Jay can lift his voice on behalf of the people of faith to believe God for answers that the world can't see. Pastor Jay, Anthony Gilbert, thank you for joining us. Would you lead us in prayer for the church, for the believer, for us people of faith to rise up at this hour. Amen. It's such an honor to be with you, men of God. And yes, I'm privileged to be able to do so today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you right now. And Father, we thank you that not only are you a God that hears prayer, but that you send an answer right away. So Father God, you are listening for our cry. And Lord, we call out to you right now in the name of Jesus, believing that you're going to cause the church to rise up in this season. Father, your word says, even as the man of God spoke, that if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek your face and turn that you would hear from heaven, forgive our sins and bring a healing. So Lord, may this be the time that there's a clarion call from every pulpit, Father. May every preacher get back to equipping the people of God, Father, in such a way that we run out of the four walls, Father, to go and touch a hurting world for Jesus. May we rise up, even as you called Esther in this time and hour, for such a time as this, Father. Forgive us where we have been so self-centered, Father. Forgive us, God, where we've been focused on ourselves. And Lord, now we turn our eyes back towards heaven. We ask you, God, to show up. We ask you to send your fire. We ask you to send your glory. We ask that you would send a spirit of repentance to each and every church to every pulpit, Father, and that, Lord, in this season, you would energize us, oh God. Lord, that you would send, Father, an upper room anointing, Father God, that where we have been ashamed of the gospel, that we would be bold, Father, that we would not care who's offended or who's upset, but, Lord, that we would declare what thus saith the Lord in love, Father, and may your people rise up triumphantly in this season. May preachers preach the gospel like never before, Father, Lord, with conviction, and, Lord, I'm praying that, Lord, we all would have 
have eternity in our hearts and in our eyes, oh God, that we would stop living for the here and now and start living for the there and then, Father. For Lord, you are soon to call your people home. And Father, I pray that we would be that bride without spot, wrinkle, or any such blemish, Father, that would go out into the world and truly be salt and light again. Lord, that we would become evangelistic in our motives again. Father, that we would go out everywhere that we go, that we would not just see people, but Lord, that we would see either those that are going to heaven or those that are going to hell. So Father God, stamp eternity on our eyes, oh God. Put it in our spirits and in our hearts. Put it back in our pulpits, oh God. And Lord, may the church rise up, Father. And even when we leave out of our homes, Father, to go back to our workplaces, may the church be different. May the church be changed, Father God. And may we be the bride that you will soon call home, Father. But Lord, we call you Maranatha, Father. Come, Lord, quickly, Father. And may we be prepared for this time, season, and moment that you have brought us to now. And Father, we thank you. And we give you praise. We give you honor. And we give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Jay. <laughs> and uh, You're welcome. We have, uh, you know, <laughs> Rabbi Sam and Liza Lewis. They pastor the Sharesh David Messianic Congregation. And Liza is on the phone. Liza, thank you for joining us. We just have a few moments left. Bishop, what topic do you want her to pray for? I want her to pray that the, the people of God will embrace the reality that God loves us so much that he disciplines us for our benefit and that the disciplines of the Lord are good for us. And so let's embrace it and find grace to come through a season that God's entrusting to us. Okay, thank you for joining us, Liza. Hello, gentlemen. Thank you for having me. Hello. Would you Hello. pray? Holy God, I the scripture that you placed on my heart that you must force me all that the Kohen me minister, the minister to Adonai speak and have pity at my Don't make your heritage a scorn or a byword among the nations. Why is the Come on, man. Oh, I'm sorry, we're having some technical difficulties. Well, Bishop, just share with us just some final words before this program's over. I was looking at this passage in Genesis 11 where God observes uh, unruly humanity and their, and their desire to build the tower. And here's what God said. He said, the people are one people. They all have the same language and this is what they began to do. Now nothing which they purpose to do will be impossible for them. He's not talking about believers. He's talking about unbelievers. And I say it like this, one people, one language, one purpose, nothing impossible. If we could wrap our words and our thoughts around this for the next 10 days and be the one people with one language, with one purpose, nothing will be impossible to us. We will see, we will see a change, a significant change in 10 days. We've got to see God. God doesn't make promises that he's not going to fulfill. Amen. Thank you so much, Bishop. Would you pray about how you can fast over these next 10 days. If you are part of a congregation, would you notify your pastor or call your other Christian friends to tell them? If you're watching this live at one, tell them to watch again at eight o'clock tonight. And Lord, we take our authority as believers. We bind this coronavirus. In the name of Jesus Christ, we command it to dry up and die and reverse itself. And Lord, that you would heal our land. Lord, we curse every negative word spoken about this thing spreading and increasing and multiplying. And we thank you, Lord, for healing our land. Thank you for joining us. We're going to go back to Adriana and Phil as we close. God bless you. And when you walk into the room, everything changes. 
darkness starts to tremble at the light that you bring. And when you walk into the room, every heart starts burning. And nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet and worship you. Can't get.